It's a Buddhist custom after a person has died is to think of the goodness that person did. And to take it as an example, especially if it's someone like Yom Gao. She set a very good example every day she was here. Even in the last hour of her life, she was doing good for the community. That's a rare opportunity. A lot of people spend the last weeks, months, years of their lives and can't do anything at all. But from the first day she came here from the, until this morning when she left, it was good all the way. So you think of the goodness she's done, and then you think about your goodness. When you go, what goodness will you leave behind? We don't have to wait till then. Build the goodness you want right now, because you never know. As in Yom Gao's case, it was all very sudden. When she set that pot of rice on the stove, she thought she was going to come back. And so the issue is, it might be very sudden for us, too. So are you ready to go? The Buddha once said, every morning when the sun rises, remind yourself, this might be the last time you see the sunrise. Are you ready to go? If not, what are you still attached to? What unfinished business do you have? Well, hurry up and finish it. And the same when the sun sets. This might be the last time you see the sun. Are you ready to go tonight? And whatever unfinished business there is, we'll take care of it now. Don't wait until it's too late. The Buddha said this is what it means to be heedful. In the textbooks in Thailand, when they have their, what they call their Dharma expert exams, there's one book on religious ceremonies, and they divide the ceremonies into two types. Two types. There's the auspicious ones and the inauspicious ones, i.e. the inauspicious ones are the ones that have to do with death. But that's not a Buddhist way of thinking. In one of the chants we chant here regularly, there's just the phrase, apamara jatam mesu etamangalamutamang. Heedfulness in all things is a great blessing. Something very auspicious. And so when we come to a ceremony like this, the purpose of this is to develop heed heedfulness. So that it is a blessing. We can make it a blessing if we become heedful, thinking about the facts. That, again, as the chant we often say, we have aging, illness, and death are normal. The English translation is unavoidable. The Thai translation is interesting. It can also mean aging, illness, and death are normal. We tend to forget these things. They seem so abnormal in our lives, especially in our society where old people are put off in a place to be by themselves and nobody else sees them. Sick people are put off in another place. Dead people are put away. Nobody else sees them. It all becomes very abnormal. And then when the basic facts of life stare us right in the face, it surprises us, shocks us. But the Buddha has this thing every day. These things are normal. And yet you've got to find happiness within these things or in the midst of these things. That's why he also includes the teaching on the fact that we have our actions as our source of happiness. The one potential for our happiness is, is through our karma. And so when you realize that, you want to realize you've got every morning you've got a chance to do some good karma, do something good for the world. You want to take that chance. Whether it's in being generous, being observing the precepts, or meditating. If you can't do anything else, just be mindful of your breath, coming in, going out. Try to keep the mind bright and clear and still in the present moment, developing good qualities of mind, because these are your treasures 
whether you're alive or whether you leave. Go to be alive someplace else. So these are the best investments of your time. So tonight we take the opportunity. Again, this is a traditional Buddhist custom is when someone has passed away, you make merit, either, either by being generous, observing the precepts, or meditating. And then you dedicate the merit to the person who's passed on. If Yom Kea has some way of knowing, she'll be happy to see that we're all here meditating. She doesn't have to worry about the monastery. But she set a good example and people are following it. And at the same time, we take this advantage. Just Take advantage of this opportunity to stop and think about our lives. Where are they going? The goodness you've built in your life, is it satisfactory yet or not? Any areas where it's lacking? Well, you've got the chance now. Each time you breathe in, each time you breathe out, each time you wake up, every morning, you've got the chance to do good. So make sure you take advantage of that opportunity. Don't let it slip by. So let's sit here for the rest of the hour, dedicate the merit of our goodness to add to the goodness that Yom Gale left behind. And as I say, that goes to meet her as well. They say that the goodness you do when you go to your next life is like relatives welcoming you. So that when you go there, it's not like going, it's like coming home. You're not going to a strange place, you're coming back to your own goodness. So try to make the goodness of your, your mind your home here, and you'll always have a home wherever you go. <laughs>